friends welcome to the module policy initiatives regarding higher education curriculum pedagogy and evaluation in this module we will try to see some of the significant policy initiatives of our country related to the higher education curriculum pedagogy and evaluation as you know it is only after independence our country has got exclusive opportunity to cast the educational policies to equip the young generation in the changing world scenario but this opportunity was not free from profound responsibility that lay ahead for reorienting the entire system of education there are various committees and commissions appointed in india for transformation in the field of education the very first commission formed in independent india was on higher education subsequent to that several commissions and committees appointed to improve education sector especially higher education at different point of time the reports and recommendations of these commissions made the foundation for initiating reorganization of indian higher education sector the pattern of higher education is entirely different from elementary education elementary education is the right of every child and is is free and compulsory but higher education is meant for the individuals having aptitude in the relevant field if we are analyzing the trends in higher education after independence we can see mainly four trends as follows first one the unwillingness to expansion and improvement of facilities in higher education institutions second even though commissions recommended for academic improvement related to curriculum content assessment and evaluation it is not administered in a successful manner the reorganization of governance of higher education institutions were approached differently by different committees another important trend is the privatization and private participation in higher education so at this context this module examines the various education commissions and policies on higher education regarding curriculum pedagogy and evaluation in independent india so let us have an overview on the various education commissions and policies the educational scenario in india at the time of independence was quite depressing there were limited number of higher education institute and vocational and technical education was poorly developed both at the school and university stages educational disparities was very huge especially related to region or religion caste and gender differences the standard of education in general was unsatisfactory with this background after independence several committees and commissions were constituted to explore the problems and purposes the way forward it was felt that universities could play a significant role in the development process following are the important commissions which made remarkable comments on higher education and its curriculum pedagogy and evaluation university education commission of 1948 to 49 university education commission was the foremost commission on education after independence its chief accent was on higher education but it also mentioned the issues 
related to other aspects of education. Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, a great visionary of modern era, was the chairman of the commission. The commission defined the vital task of higher education. The commission was meant to study the problem of university education in the country and to suggest measures for its reforms, keeping in view the needs and aspirations of the people. The commission, after extensive negotiation, made very important recommendations on higher education, especially regarding curriculum, pedagogy and assessment and are relevant even in the contemporary context. Some of the recommendations are as follows. The commission emphasized the role of postgraduate education training and research for the advancement of knowledge. It stressed that scientific and technical base of the education system should be strengthened. Recognizing the significance of the medium of instruction, the commission recommended that Indian languages should be used as a medium of instruction in higher education. Students at the higher secondary and university levels should be made acquainted with three languages, the regional language, the federal language and the English. Higher educationists imparted through the instrumentality of the regional language with the option to use the federal language as the medium of instruction either for some subjects or for all subjects. There should be a connecting bond between the general, academic and vocational education. The principles and practices of general education must become an integral part of course at the immediate and degree stage. The standard of admission to university courses should correspond to that of the intermediate examination. That is, after 12 years of study at school and intermediate college, the higher education should diversify its outcomes in such a way that many could effectively participate in real life by taking up jobs or self-employment and only very few would continue study beyond school. Avoid mass lecturing to the possible extent and provide library work, exercises and other activities. Limit enrollment to universities and affiliated colleges in order to avoid overfilling. Should augment the standard of master courses in arts and science education and regulate the admission according to the faculties and facilities of institutions. In order to improve the standard high school and intermediate education, improve the quality of teaching first. And coming to the recommendation made by the committee regarding the examination and assessment, criticizing the existing system of examination, the commission opined, caught, if you are asked to give one single reform in university education, we shall say it should be that of examinations. Realizing the deficiencies of the examination system and the magnitude of the wastage, the commission recommended a thorough study of the scientific methods of educational testing and appraisal. Objective examination should introduce in universities at the earliest. The commission noted that examinations been described as one of the most awful element of Indian higher education. It said that in our visits to the universities, we heard from teachers and students alike the endless tale of how examinations have become the aim and end of education, how all instruction is subordinated to them, how they kill all initiatives in the teacher and the student, 
how capricious, invalid, unreliable and inadequate they are and how they tend to corrupt the moral standards of university life. Coming to the Secondary Education Commission, Government of India appointed Secondary Education Commission under the chairmanship of Dr. A. L. Swami Mudaliyar on September 23, 1952. The commission was basically meant to study the various problems of secondary education and to suggest measures for reforms on AIM, teaching arrangement, organization, the relationship of secondary education with primary and university education the useful pattern of education for the whole country. It also made recommendations on higher education in India and pointed out various defects in the existing pattern of education and suggested various reforms. The commission stressed that even the finest curriculum and the best syllabi remains ineffective unless can into life by the right method of teaching and the right kind of teacher. The methods should be dynamic and scientific. It is recommended that a deliberate attempt should be made to implement methods of instruction to the needs of individual students as much as possible to so that dull average and bright students may all have a chance to progress at their own pace. Also recommended a minimum of 10 years of common curriculum for building citizenship and diversification of courses would be introduced only after this. The commission emphasized the necessity for the alternative channels of education to eliminate illiteracy and afford adult education. For improving the quality of education, the commission focused on institutional planning for improving standards nationwide, promotion of new work ethics, improved teaching and learning materials and methods of teaching and evaluation. Commission stressed that Professional training of teachers was a key for introduction of new courses for teacher training. Recommendations regarding the examination and evaluation. The commission recommended that the number of examinations should be reduced and avoid subjectivity in questions. Continuous evaluation and assessment is necessary throughout the academic year. Numerical marking should be replaced by symbolic systems like grading in external and internal examination and also in student evaluation records. There should be only one final public examination at the end of the course. Then coming to the Education Commission of 1964-66. The Kothari Commission was set up under the chairmanship of Dr. D. S. Kothari to formulate a coherent policy for India's national development through education. This commission basically emphasized on education for national development. The commission was most comprehensive in nature. It considered almost all aspects of the education system without limiting itself to any particular aspect. So coming to the various recommendations regarding curriculum, pedagogy and standards of higher education. The report stressed that the universities are the places of ideas, high standards of conduct and integrity from all the members. The Kothari Education Commission recommended for academic freedom to teachers to allow them to publish independent studies and researches. The commission identified need for the provision of 
laboratories, libraries, sufficient strength of teachers and other staff as the parameter to decide the number of students to be admitted in a college or university. It recommended giving special attention for postgraduate courses and training and research. It recommended for the centers to promote research and training. Higher education institution should provide the right kind of leadership in all walks of life by helping the individuals to develop their potential. Attempts to be taken to bring the universities closer to the community through extension of knowledge and its application for problem solving. So, coming to the recommendations of evaluation and assessment. Kothari Commission recommended improving the quality of examination to help the students to improve their level of achievement rather than certifying the quality of their performance. Frequent changes of textbook should be avoided and their prices should be low enough for students of ordinary means to buy them. Evaluation of students performance should be continuous in nature and internal assessment should give due importance along with external examinations. Now, coming to a significant commission named National Knowledge Commission of 2005. National Knowledge Commission NKC was appointed to meet the educational challenges of 21st century. It is not accurately an educational commission as its functions was to propose the framework for quality, access and equity in higher education sector. NKC is one of the imperative initiatives for enhancement of quality of education which intended to prepare a blueprint for reform of our knowledge related institutions and infrastructure which would enable India to meet the challenges of the future. The major recommendations of the commission regarding higher education are followed. The commission stressed the emergency for innovation in the curriculum and examination system by avoiding rote learning. A change in the system of regulation for higher education is inevitable. The present regulatory system in higher education is defective in some important respects. The system as a whole is over regulated but under governed. So, there is a clear need to establish an independent regulatory authority for higher education. This was the recommendation. Develop more universities to facilitate a massive expansion of opportunities in higher education that would enable India to attain elevated gross enrollment ratio. NKC focused on the need to reform the pedagogy of language teaching and the use of all available media to supplement traditional teaching methods. Information and communication technology to be made more accessible to teachers students and the administrators. NKC also recommends pre-service and in-service teacher education programs with adequate monitoring. Now coming to the Yashpal committee of 2009. The Yashpal committee was meant for the renovation and rejuvenation of higher education. The committee analyzed various facets of higher education and made remarkable suggestions. The prime suggestions are as follows. The higher education institute should be centers of teaching as well as research activities. The committee strongly recommends a reunion of research activities and graduates and undergraduate teaching process. The students should be given chance to interact with the researchers. The committee has recommended 
formation of national commission for higher education and research that will perform its regulatory function without interfering in institutes freedom and autonomy the committee has robustly suggested curricular reforms to harmonize theoretical course content with on field practical exposure in the form of summer jobs or internship the courses should be planned so that there is integration across disciplines that the learners simulated in various subjects the committee stressed on improving teacher education as according to it the responsibility of training teachers at all levels belongs to higher education institute coming to the cave committee on autonomy of 2005 central advisory board of education committee on autonomy has made significant suggestions for all the around quality improvement of higher education the committee suggested that there is a necessity to endow autonomy to individual higher education institutions for designing curriculum universities may provide a general framework within which individual faculty member both with the universities and in colleges should be encouraged to make over teaching and learning into an interesting and rewarding experience all universities should implement novel approaches in undertaking periodic revision of curriculum depending on the developments in the subject area authoritative agencies may develop appropriate mechanism of checking the quality of curricular changes envisaged by the institution and provide feedback for improvement wherever required the higher education institution should focus equally on academic and job oriented programs while planning for new programs to make higher education relevant for the world of work all universities should shift towards implementation of choice based credit courses along with semester system within the minimum possible time this would bring in flexibility in the educational organization in addition to facilitate students mobility both within the country and abroad it is recommended that there could be a mix of internal and external evaluation depending on the conditions prevailing in each university each higher education institution should set up an internal quality assurance cell iqac with a view to continuously assess its performance on objective and predefined parameters institutions should make their output performance public to ensure accountability now coming to the major educational policies of the country the major commissions on education discussed earlier laid down the foundation for developing education policies in india in this regard national policy on education of 1968 and 1986 and the revised program of action of 1992 was established for preparing the detailed road map for implementation of the schemes of education now let us discuss in detail what the policies had to say about aspects of education coming to the national policy on education of 1968 The national policy of 1968 marked a significant step in the history of education in post-independent India. It laid stress on the need for a drastic restoration of the education system to improve its quality at all stages. The policy emphasized 
fortification of curricula and improvement of textbook and teaching methods. It advocated the strengthening of science education and steeping up of scholarship schemes for backward sections of the society. Though NPE 1968 was an excellent attempt in suggesting ways forward, it could not be executed successfully in the absence of a detailed functioning strategy, assignment of precise responsibility and lack of financial and organizational support. Now coming to the national policy on education of 1986. The national policy on education was proposed to set up India for the 21st century. The policy observed that caught education in India stands at a crossroad today. Neither normal linear expansion nor the existing pace and nature of improvement can meet the needs of the situation and caught. The policy was intended to raise educational standards and increase access to education. The major suggestions of the policy on higher education include specially designed orientation programs will be organized for professional and career development of teachers. District Institute of Education and Training that need to be established with the capability to organize pre-service and in-service courses for elementary school teachers and for non-formal and adult education. The National Council for Teacher Education should be provided the necessary resources and capability to accredit institutions of teacher education and to provide guidance regarding curricula and methods. The NPE and program of action elaborately discussed about the concept of language development and emphasize the adoption of regional languages as the medium of instruction at the university stage. The prime legacies of the 1986 policy were the promotion of privatization and the continued accent on secularism and science. The government constituted a review committee under the chairmanship of Ajarya Ramamurthy in 1989 to review the progress and effectiveness of NPE 1986. The report of Ramamurthy committee put up in 1990 was named towards an enlightened and humane society. The recommendation of the committee provided a base to develop a new program of action, the revised program of action 1992. Before taking into consideration the suggestions of the Ramamurthy committee, the government formed another committee under the chairmanship of Janardana Reddy in 1992. The report of the committee provided a base for the modified national policy on education and a concrete program emerged as program of action 1992 POA 1992 which proposed education for equality. The POA stressed that quote, we have one of the largest system of higher education in the world but at the same time the spread and development in this sector have been uneven in infrastructure facilities resulting in wide variation in the quality of teaching and research. Most recently the draft national policy NPE also made remarkable suggestions for the qualitative expansion of higher education in terms of its curriculum, designing, pedagogical approaches and evaluation techniques. To sum up what we have already discussed, Indian higher education developed through years on the lights of valuable suggestions and recommendations made by different commissions and committees on time to time. 
various facets of higher education were molded according to the changing needs of the society. As a result of these suggestions, various colleges, central and state universities and other higher education institutes has established and various schemes and programs initiated to enrich higher education sector. All the commissions and policies made suggestions for the periodic renovation of higher education curriculum and transformation in the pedagogical as well as assessment methods to meet the global standards. If these fine suggestions and recommendations implemented properly, India's higher education sector can expand its quality and excel in the global scenario. Hope you have got a clear synoptic profile on the various policies and documents related to higher education in the post independent period. Thank you very much and we will meet again. Thank you.